speaker is Professor Asanga Tilakaratne. Professor Asanga Tilakaratne is a professor of Pali and Buddhist studies and founder head of the Department of Buddhist Studies at the University of Colombo, Sri Lanka. He has published both in Sinhala and English more than 100 papers on Buddhist studies. In 2002, he founded Sri Lanka Association of Buddhist Studies. In 2003, he founded, with a group of academicians and professionals, Damribi Foundation and continues to function as its founder chairman, Professor Tilakaratne. Thank you very much for those uh, nice words. Um, His Holiness Jagat Guru Sri 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 Nirmalanandanath Swamiji, uh, most venerable Abhidaja Maharatra Guru Dr. Sitagu Sayado and venerable members of the Mahasangha, uh, all the other dignitaries of uh, religions, uh, political uh, leaders, distinguished uh, guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I am really happy to be here this morning uh, give, uh, speaking about uh, Buddhist uh, thoughts on nature and environment in this uh, Sangvad number two, Interfaith Dialogue for Peace, Harmony and Security. Uh, from yesterday, we have been listening to many uh, inspirational speeches and also presentations. This morning, we have been listening to many, again, interesting presentations on nature and environment. Uh, in fact, uh, what I would like to do this morning within these few minutes is uh, to uh, bring out some ideas on nature and environment in Buddhism. Um, you must uh, forgive me because I'm trying to uh, uh, summarize uh, 6,000 plus words, my paper in within less than 10 minutes. So uh, um, I don't know how, how far I can be doing this uh, successfully. Uh, but what I would like to do is when we look at nature and environment, uh, first, I would like to look at, look at nature as a broad phenomenon and uh, environment as something uh, particularly contextual. When we talk about nature, we are talking about a very broad phenomenon, including rivers, forests, mountains, valleys, plains, deserts, oceans, the sun, moon, and stars, not only that, tsunamis, hurricanes, volcanoes, and floods. So all these uh, combined, we talk about nature. But when we refer to environment, we are referring to environment as something particular, environment something related to basically the human beings or in a particular context. Now in these two uh, things, what should be the behavior or the role of the human being. I think uh, uh, one very important thing we need to consider is when we look at the human being vis-a-vis -vis nature, we can see from Buddhist point of view, on the one hand, human being is uh, a helpless victim of uh, nature. Like when we take uh, tsunamis, hurricanes, floods, and you know things like that. A human being is a helpless uh, victim of nature. At the same time, on the other hand, we can see that human being, because of his uh, uh, psychological strength, because of his strength of his mind, human being is in a position to, in a way we can say, control the nature or to get the nature behave according to the human being's uh, want and human beings need. So in this sense, there is a, a dual role for the human being. On the one hand, he is a victim of nature. On the other hand, he is also in a position to uh, uh, control nature. Now, important thing is how should we behave? When we, when we think about nature, this is a very important thing. Now, we hear quite a lot about uh, our relationship with the nature, and also we heard quite a lot about uh, uh, depletion of ozone layer and uh, water resources, depletion of water resources, and a lot of uh, 
um, environmental damage made by human beings. Uh, so there is quite a large discussion on this. But I would like to take you briefly to a little bit uh, abstract and philosophical question. Actually, what should be the human being's role? Now, I remember, for example, some time ago there was a movement called uh, Earth First Movement. Now, the Earth First Movement, some time ago, uh, claimed that uh, they want to preserve the Earth at any cost. Now, the interesting thing is, by preserving Earth at any cost, at any cost means even at the cost of human beings, then why are we saving the Earth at any cost? If there are no human beings inside that, so who will be there? I think uh, this is an important problem we have to think, because on the one hand, we have to be in, uh, in this nature, in this world. On the other hand, we can't be alone, because we need to have trees, plants, animals, oceans, rivers, and all these things. But what is the balance? I mean, on the one hand, we can talk about the love for animals. However, suppose there comes a situation where we have to say goodbye and let the world inhabited by animals, would we be doing that? I mean, what is the limit of this? What is, what is the limit of our compassion? Or what is the limit of altruism? Or what is the limit of selfishness? We also hear about of course, Buddhism says that everything is pratitya samutpanna, dependently originated. So we, we depend on the nature and the nature depend on us. Now, I think we need to think about this because uh, can we really transcend our own existence and look at this problem? I don't think we can do that. So how should we behave? I mean, I'm posing this problem not because I have an answer, but I'm posing this problem because we need to go a little bit beyond sentimentalism and look at the problem objectively. Because human being is, I mean, as a human being, we are the people who are making decisions. Nobody else is making decisions. Now, I think what, what I'm trying to raise in my paper is, one of the questions is this, how we are going to make decisions? Now, this is one, I mean, the central question as I see with regard to nature. However, environment, we can see environment is, envir in environment we see hum our relationship human beings, our relationship to animals, and also our relationship to plant life. So there are uh, several uh, aspects of our behavior towards environment. I'm not going to deal with that because, you know, that is a fairly, you know, substantial another area, but there is quite a lot in Buddhism that says how we should behave towards other human beings, how we should behave towards animals, and also how we should behave towards plant life. Having taken all these things together, still the problem I raised at the very beginning uh, remains. The problem is how should we behave as human beings uh, towards nature? I think there is no hard and fast uh, rule uh, it's true that uh, human beings are the decision makers. How are we going to make decisions? I think this is where Buddhism can guide us, namely uh, in Buddhist ethics. We are, we are taught that our actions should be guided by two main principles, namely compassion and wisdom. Now, it's very important to see the connection between these two virtues, compassion and wisdom. I remember Buddha Gosha, the great uh, Theravada commentator to the Pali Canon. In the Visuddhi Magga says something very interesting. He says, if you are compassionate, but you lack wisdom, then you can become a, a very naive, foolish person. On the other hand, if you lack compassion, but if we have only wisdom, they can, then you can become a very cunning person. So on the one hand, you have to have the compassion. On the other hand, we have to have the wisdom. So the behavior needs to be guided by both, not by one single factor. So when we speak about the Buddha, we, we, talk, 
we speak about the Buddha, we know that his behavior was characterized by uh, intermingling of these two virtues. And according to Buddha Gosha, all our behavior should be guided by uh, compassion and wisdom. Now, the question I raised is, we are the decision makers here. How should we make decisions? Now, on the one hand, our own existence is a very important thing. We will not leave this world to the trees and plants and animals at some point. If our existence becomes the real issue, then how we are going to make decisions, I think it is there that we have to look at these two uh, great uh, virtues, compassion and wisdom, and we make a decision based on those virtues. Actually, this kind of issues we know that do not have simple answers like two plus two makes four or something. So uh, in abstract, we cannot even think about. However, in any given situation, we know that we have to preserve the nature and also we have to preserve the human beings also. So the nature versus human being and the human being versus nature. So we need to, I think the challenge for us is to find a way to strike a balance between these two. Because we can't talk about nature as if we are not existent. On the other hand, we cannot talk about our own existence as if uh, nature doesn't exist, because we cannot exist without the nature. So therefore, ultimately, Buddhist answer seems to be that our behavior, particularly uh, in this uh, very important and grave issue, we need to be guided by uh, compassion and uh, wisdom. Today, it is very important that we are looking at this problem because we are forced to look at it. The climate is changing uh, so fast and things are happening in an uh, unprecedented manner. However, for us as intelligent human beings to strike a balance in our behavior, I think uh, we need to, uh, of course, this doesn't mean that other religions don't provide it, but I'm looking from a Buddhist point of view, weaving this problem issue from Buddhist point of view, answer seems to be that we need to be guided by these two broad principles of great compassion and great wisdom, which will, be, which will guide us to find the solutions according to particular context we will be facing at particular time and space. Thank you very much.